Installing firmware in the Tronsmart Vega S89 can be a little tricky, so we're going to take you through it step by step. Tronsmart has a couple different firmwares available on their site. The latest one that we're going to be installing is version 111K4. Now this isn't available as an OTA upgrade, you're going to have to do it manually. So you can do it one of two ways, either installing it on a micro SD card or by using the USB update tool. We're going to go through both. We'll look at installing from the SD card first because that way you don't have to deal with the USB update tool at all. The firmware is labeled as an SD card version, so simply copy that over to a blank micro SD card and you're good to go. Now the files are over 400 meg in size, so this will take a bit of time to copy over. Now once you get them copied, we'll show you what to do with them a bit later on. So here's how to quickly install the MLogic USB burning tool if you don't already have it installed from a previous firmware upgrade. Um, Transmart will put this on their firmware download page. It comes in an RAR file, so you'll need something to unzip it or unrar it, I guess. Uh, but once you do, it'll pull up a folder for it and a simple setup exe. Double click on that. It's going to ask you if you want to let it make changes to the computer, uh, setup language, all the normal fun stuff. I uh, just click through that. I have everything installed on a secondary drive, so you can always change what location you install it to, what it's called, and yeah, we'll give it a desktop icon. Why not? And then there you go. The entire process should only take a few seconds. Um, I have a slightly older computer, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But other than that, you are good to go. Um, you're going to have the driver install wizard, and then you're done. Now, one of the problems you may run into is if you're running a 64-bit operating system, say Windows 7 or like me, Windows 8.1, you may have difficulty getting the MLogic tool to actually work. Um, I was getting an error saying the, the program cannot be open. So we did a little research. Turns out there is an older version on Geek Buying's website that will work just fine. So I went ahead and installed that. Now the version looks identical. Um, let's open it up. So here we are in the USB burning tool. First thing you're going to probably want to do is change the language, make it a bit easier to read. Uh, the language icon is the second menu option from the left. You can also stretch out the column so it's a bit easier to read. After that, you're going to want to import the image file itself. Go back to File and Import Image. After that, you're going to navigate to wherever you downloaded the file. Uh, select the IMG file and open. It is going to say if it's a large file, it will take a bit of time. Shouldn't take more than a couple seconds. After that, it'll appear at the bottom of the screen there. Now, here's the tricky part. You have to turn on the Vega in reset mode. So take a paper clip or a toothpick, put it in the back of the AB slot. There'll be a button way in the back. You have to press that while turning on the Vega. Um, after that, you're going to see connect success. That'll mean it's actually connected to your computer. And after that, we can hit the start button and that'll start the download process. Uh, first thing it's going to do is erase the entire machine. So it'll be just like a fresh install. And this does take a few minutes. So we're going to skip ahead here a little bit. So here we are, skip to the end. As you can see, it took three minutes and 23 seconds to complete successfully. After that, you can hit the stop button. Um, I like to do a refresh just to make sure. Once that's done, disconnect it from the computer and turn it on. So the boot up process is going to take a little bit longer than normal, just because it is going through that first boot all over again. If you elected to use the SD card instead of the USB burning tool, what you're going to want to do is pop the card into the slot, press the reset button in the back of the AV port, and turn it on like normally. It'll go through the same process. And that's it. You're done. You can check the firmware version on the settings screen just like you normally would. It should say 111K4 in this case. Check out Android PC Review for more details. And as always, give us a thumbs up and subscribe.